When you're departing on an IFR flight, there is one very important thing you'll need before takeoff that you don't need on a VFR flight. If the weather conditions are less than VFR minimums, you must have an IFR clearance before you enter controlled airspace. Before you jump into the IFR pool, ATC must fit your flight into their airspace to prevent traffic conflicts. Basically, you can't swim until the lifeguard blows a whistle. If there is a control tower on the field, departing IFR is a lot easier. Now, as you know, control towers usually operate at busier airports and are there to keep aircraft separated, specifically on the runways. But when you're departing under IFR, you'll especially appreciate the added convenience a control tower provides to help get you on your way. IFR clearances are usually issued by air route traffic control centers or terminal radar approach control facilities, not by towers. But towers have direct lines to the folks responsible for the overlying airspace, and they can usually get your IFR clearance for you in a flash. In most cases, if you request your clearance before you start your engine, it will be available for you before you're ready for taxi. And that's good. It gives you plenty of time to review your clearance and make sure that you understand it. When you fly from a towered airport and they're not real busy, you usually just advise ground control that you have a pre-filed IFR flight plan and that you're requesting your clearance. But airports with a lot of IFR operations will often have a separate frequency for clearance delivery. So the ground control frequency won't be tied up issuing and reading back clearances. In fact, the busiest airports may even have more than one of those clearance delivery frequencies, like right here. When you call for your IFR clearance, you might say something like this. Wichita clearance delivery, Cessna 359er Echo Sierra at Transient Parking, IFR to Independence, Information Golf. Now, when you're ready for an IFR takeoff, you can't just go as soon as the runway is clear of local traffic. A tower must get authorization from the local departure control or sometimes center before they can release you. So when you're ready to depart, you'll call the tower and say, for example, Wichita Tower, Cessna 359er Echo Sierra, ready for takeoff IFR, runway 19er left. The tower will probably respond with Cessna 359er Echo Sierra, hold for IFR release. Then they'll contact departure control on their direct line. And when departure control is ready for you, they'll tell the tower to let you go. That way you know that there will be space in the pipeline for you. Before you actually request takeoff clearance, make sure that you have all your nav and comm radios set up. And that would include putting the departure control frequency in the standby position. When departure tells the tower to release you for takeoff, the tower will clear you as soon as the local traffic situation permits. Now, ATC wants you to be controlled by those who have the best information for your location. And right after takeoff, that's the control tower. They are responsible for the Class D airspace, and you probably won't be the only airplane flying there. The tower will tell you when to switch to departure control. You do not want to switch before then. You may miss a very important call from those folks in the tower cab. The tower won't usually give you a switch until you've had time to climb several hundred feet. Of course, if you're really busy when they tell you to switch, Take care of your most important job first, flying the airplane. That means keep climbing and fly the proper heading. Talk only when you're sure you have your airplane under control. When the tower does tell you to contact departure, hit the transfer switch to move the departure control frequency from standby to active. Now there are some things you should say in your initial call up that will really help the departure controller. First, regardless of whether the tower used an abbreviated call sign for you, make sure you use your full call sign when you check in with departure on that initial call. 
that eliminates any confusion in case there's another airplane on the frequency with a similar call sign. Second, the departure controller will want to know your current altitude, and that's to validate his mode C readout from your transponder. Third, he'll want to know your assigned altitude. And finally, he'll want to know your assigned heading, if you've been given one, to make sure that you and he are on the same page about where you're going right now. So, your check-in with departure control might sound something like this. Uh, departure, Cessna 359er Echo Sierra, leaving 1,800, climbing to 5,000, runway heading. As you can see, when you're departing IFR from a tower-controlled airport, you have direct access to important resources that are just a mic button away. You'll learn later how to launch into IFR confidently, even if there isn't an operating control tower at your departure airport. But it is nice to get pampered with the full-service conveniences of a control tower. And unlike other dealings in life, there's no extra charge for full service. Isn't that refreshing?